Hi, I'm Beth, and this is Read Remark. Thank you for joining today. We're going to be talking about the Dan Mallory scandal. Thank you so much for joining today. My name is Beth, this is Read Remark, and today we're going to be talking about lying liars who lie. Should be quite a lively conversation. Hey, yo. <laughs> So I'm sure many of you have read the article in the New Yorker talking about Dan Mallory and his long web of lies. This guy also goes under the pen name A.J. Finn. He wrote the smash hit The Woman in the Window. It's a book which I in fact glowingly reviewed. It sold a whole lot of copies. He made like one or two million dollars off of it and it's actually been made into a movie starring Amy Adams that's set to come out later this year. So big smash hit. Well, it turns out Dan Mallory, the author behind the pen name, has a long line of telling lies in the publishing world. So some of his lies include um, having electroconvulsive therapy, having taught at Oxford where he also earned his doctorate. He did not and he did not. Working closely with Tina Fey in the publishing world or that the publishers published J.K. Rowling's book, The Cuckoo's Calling, under his specific recommendation. He fudged his resume for a long time so that he could get better and better, better jobs in publishing, jobs that really he had no right to. He lied about having agoraphobia. He lied about having been a model and appeared on the cover of Russian Vogue. He lied about having cancer in this long series of emails from his brother, Jake. He lied about so many things, and his history even includes putting pea cups at his employer's place when he left. <laughs> it's just weird. It's weird. So the story has it that when he was releasing his book, he put it under his pen name, A.J. Finn, did not reveal who he was until the bidding got up to around uh, $750,000. And then as soon as his name was released, Dan Mallory is the man behind the book, just about all the publishers dropped out at that point. They apparently had this whisper network going where they knew who he was, what he was all about, and wanted no part of it. Now the publishing house where he worked ended up taking the book, going with it, gave him a two book deal. Now while I enjoyed The Woman in the Window quite a bit, I've been reading recently that it's quite similar to another book called Saving April by Sarah Denzel that was published two years prior to The Woman in the Window. Shockingly similar plot lines. Now, I haven't read Saving April, so I can't speak personally on whether there's any plagiarism at play there, but people who have read it are kind of, you know, raising the alarms that there could be more to Dan Mallory than just this web of lies. It could, in fact, include plagiarism. Now, it's raised quite a bit of questions among people in the publishing industry, including specifically women and women of color in the publishing industry who work there and very diligently and have well-respected careers, but maybe don't rise quite as quickly as the Dan Mallory's, don't get quite the pay and adulation as the Dan Mallory's do. So one of the tweets in particular from Laura Sebastian says, the Dan Mallory story is wild and hilarious until you remember that young women of color are leaving publishing in droves while mediocre white men continue to find enormous success while making sub-zero effort in creating hostile work environments for their co-workers. Wei Ming Cam said, the Dan, this Dan Mallory story is bananas and also one of the most unsurprising and embarrassing accounts of how a mediocre white man will get away with so much in publishing. You know, it brings up a lot of things because Dan Mallory is a young, handsome, white man. I know that it seems like whenever women or people of color bring up issues that have to do with this, it seems like we're almost a little too trigger happy, a little too sensitive. But when things like this happen, it really points out this sort of white male privilege that you see, or even beyond male, it's this white privilege that's kind of hard to ignore. So when you look at some other lying liars who have been pretty successful in the past, 
such as Anna Delvey, this socialite who managed to defraud people of so much money in New York and is now serving some jail time but is being turned into a Netflix special by Shonda Rhimes or Jordan Belfort, the Wolf of Wall Street, who defrauded so many people out of their savings and then got this movie made out of him, or Frank Abagnale, who defrauded so many people and got the movie Catch Me If You Can made after him. You know, all these people who are white and do these terrible things in these enormous money grabs, you know, I wouldn't say that they're quite turned into folk heroes, but they're, it, you know, it's hard to even put words to it. It just feels a little bit slimy how much they're able to get away with, and then on the back end, how much they're able to make off of it. Now, in my vast research of compulsive lying, by which I mean Googling and reading exactly two articles on the internet, which means I'm at expert levels now, right? I have found that there are some different things that have to do with being a compulsive liar. Now, it's not covered by the DSM-5, but it could possibly be indicative of a larger psychosis, or maybe not. Sometimes it's linked to narcissism, sometimes to other things, but sometimes it's just someone likes to lie. It could mean that the person is going through turmoil or has a traumatic past, or maybe it doesn't. A lot of people will lie about health conditions, which is certainly the case of Dan Mallory of what he did. Sometimes they don't though. And it could be that these people who lie compulsively or pathologically begin to even believe their own lies. It's like it comes out of their mouth and becomes gospel at that point. So it's really hard to get through to people like that. There are a lot of literary comparisons to be made to this instance and those of other compulsive liars. The most obvious one is going to be the talented Mr. Ripley. While um, Dan Mallory didn't go as far as to kill anyone and assume his identity or anything like that, he did assume this whole alter ego under whom he was crafting these elaborate emails. Another comparison that came to my mind was a book I read recently called A Ladder to the Sky by John Boyne. And boy oh boy is that a good twisty book. <laughs> and highly, highly disturbing. It is also a book about a serial plagiarizer who just masterfully puts himself in the right place at the right time and ingratiates himself to just the right people to get ahead without quite deserving it. Another book that this brings up is Bad Blood by John Carreyrou. This is one that I read recently. It is a nonfiction entry and features Elizabeth Holmes, the head of the um, medical technology company Theranos, which had tried to invent this new device, but fudged the results, fudged the efficacy of it, and wound up putting a lot of people in peril for their health issues and then also defrauding a lot of people of a lot of money. Now it's still a little bit fuzzy in my head, the difference between being a compulsive liar and being just downright evil because some of these misdeeds really cross the line into just being a person hater. Like when you think about Dirty John, the subject of one of my favorite podcasts, Dirty John, this guy lied left and right, but at his heart, he was deeply evil deeply evil. Or the nurse in a book I read recently called The Good Nurse. It was this nurse who lied about himself, about his life, his background, and meanwhile was killing patients left and right. Evil. Evil. The lies commingled with evil. The most fascinating comparison in my mind, though, is another real-life <laughs> example, one that happened pretty recently in the Twitter sphere, and that is the saga of T. Medlin. T. Medlin put a post on Instagram or Twitter where he put a picture of a woman at a tech conference making kind of an awkward smile and thumbs up saying, someone call the authorities if I go missing. Hello, oh, well, she's been following me during this whole conference. Well, <laughs> he angered the people in technology. He angered the nerds. You don't anger the nerds because they will come after you with knowledge and that is the most dangerous thing of all. So that's exactly what happened. Um, this woman is a somewhat prominent woman in tech and her um, colleagues, associates, what have you, saw this picture and brought it to her attention and she came back and said, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm not at this conference. This is a picture I posted three years ago about being a woman in tech and how awkward it is. And then 
the nerds, the tribe of nerds, the wonderful tribe of nerds, found this long history of T. Medlin making stuff up. He posted a picture of a car crash saying, wow, I was in this crash and now I have so much more perspective. It was just a, a picture he picked up from an article about somebody else's car crash. The most funny example is where he took a picture with Seth Rogen, the celebrity, and said that they were at a golf tournament together. It was just a picture of him with his arm around Seth Rogen's wax figure at the museum. So what to make of the Dan Mallory story? I don't know. Will I read his next book? I don't know. I don't know. I'm still kind of puzzling with um, separating the art from the artist in my mind. And where do I go with that whenever the artist turns out to be just a horrible human being? Um, it's very fuzzy in my mind, and I'm not quite sure what the right answer is. So interesting conundrum for us readers, interesting conundrum for the publishing industry. We'll see where this story goes. I feel like we have not seen the end of it quite yet. So what do you think? Did you read the book? Did you read the article? I'm going to link to it in the notes below. Let me know what you think because it just, the fact that there are people out there who lie like that, you know, everybody tells white lies here and there, but the fact that there are people who lie compulsively like that is just fascinating and horrifying. All right, let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching as always, and I'll catch you next time. Bye. It's just, it's all fun and games until it turns into murder. Yeah, I just went there. <laughs>